Welcome back, you guys. It has been way too long since I've flown the Kid Fox. Actually, it's been like a whole month. I'm actually still waiting on my radio from ICOM to get repaired. So thank you, Scott, for allowing me to use your handheld, somebody locally here. If you see something a little bit different, I've got landing lights on this plane now. I've got a lot better strobes. I've got position lights. Uh, let's see right there. And I also have a new, well, for one, tailwheel suspension as well as my rear position light and strobe. So as you guys can see, I have switched out for the T3 tailwheel. The reason being is because I just don't have the time to go back and redesign my other tailwheel right now and the time it takes to get it remanufactured and everything else. My plan is to still redo it. I would like to. I know what I need to do to get it to work what I want but I just don't have the time and I don't want it slowing me down from being able to go out and fly my plane into places that I'd like to. So today I'm going out to a place I've taken you guys once before. I actually don't know the name of it. Um, anyway, it's an old mining strip about 25 minutes of that away. I'm going to do a quick walk around. Actually, I'm going to do an extensive walk around on this one because I haven't flown in so long. I also, if you guys watched my last video when the tailwheel actually hit the rudder um, down here just because my spring was not strong enough, I went ahead and just replaced all of these just for safety's sake. If, if, if I did hit that, that would be the first failure point from like a stress fracture or something like that. And I didn't want to take a chance, so I just replaced all of those. And I think we're good to go. So let me get this thing warmed up and we'll get going out to a really, really cool, fun um, old mining strip. And hopefully all the plants. I was going to bring my loppers today and actually clean it up out there for other people to use and I forgot. So maybe I'll have to go out there again. But anyway, let's get going. All right, well, I'm using this handheld, kind of switching back and forth. So until I get out of here, I probably won't be doing much talking uh, just because I want to be listening to see if anybody else is in the pattern or not. I don't hear anybody yet. But one thing I am noticing is it's a lot easier to taxi with the T3 with the, the correct um, pivot angle for the caster or the castering tail wheel. That's something that I need to change on mine, but yeah, it's just so much easier to taxi around and just kind of maneuver as I want. And it is kind of nice having landing lights. I have wigwag on here as well. I'll be doing a night video with you guys for sure very shortly. I already have my operating limitations changed for this plane, so thank you, Gary, from the FAA. Got those done in like absolute record time. So I'm already ready to go legally out flying and I I really can't wait. It's gonna be fun. I haven't been night flying and I actually don't even remember the last time. Sometime in New Guinea going to Australia. I just, oh, I guess you don't remember that. <laughs> it was a matter of fact flight down to Australia at night, no moon over the ocean for three hours. It was just a black of wall of absolutely nothing. One thing I noticed just from not flying in one month is how you have to get back into very light movements with this airplane. It's just like every little thing is just like, whoa, my goodness. So I haven't explained this yet because I haven't done a video yet on my lights, but I've got some new switches here. So I've got this one is nav. I haven't labeled them yet. I'm going to be doing that this week. This is my nav. This is just my landing light. And then this one here next to it is wigwag. So it's just going to flash back and forth. And then I have my strobe, and I just used my original strobe uh, switch just because I didn't want to change anything with that and put another one up there for no reason. So thank you to Aero LED. They sponsored this build for that. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be really nice because I'm really looking forward to going out and doing some night flying. I'm gonna start first just by sticking here, make sure that I remember how to do everything, get the lights turned on at the airport, things like that. And then I'll probably do some just like flights down to Lake Havasu just because it's like a half hour flight. I'd like to do some just around highways in case I have an engine failure. I mean, this is a single engine, obviously. But just for safety reasons like that, I don't need to going out into the open desert if I don't need to. All right, now, I'm trying to think where, I think it's over this way. Like I said, I've only been there one time. I remember if I 
um, marked it on my thing. So let me throw the autopilot on here now that we're at a plenty high enough altitude for now. We'll bring our RPM back down. No, it does not appear that I did save it. So I'm going to save it when I land. That way, you guys, if you guys are into like Microsoft Flight Sim, X-Plane, something like that, if, if it's on here, well, it probably will be for the most part. I'll leave a, a link on my Patreon page where you guys can go try out this same airstrip out here. There's actually two of them out here, both on BLM land. Man, for how little wind, I was kind of hoping it would be a little bit smoother of a flight today. This thing is just not very much fun to fly if it's bumpy around. And I've had a few of you guys ask, what am I going to do with this airplane once I head back to Papua New Guinea in June? I've kind of come to the decision, I think I'm going to sell it. I just don't, I have a place that I can store it. And um, for the three years if I wanted to. But that's just a really long time for it just to be sitting doing absolutely nothing. And that's just a lot of money just to be sitting around doing absolutely nothing at the same time. So that's kind of my thinking. So probably here coming this May, I'll probably be putting it up for sale. I don't really know what I'm going to be going, what I'm going to be putting it up for. Done quite a bit of work. The new interior, I would still like to cover this um, with the same carbon fiber that the side of this panel has, just so it matches. But, I mean, I got bigger tires, new tail wheel, new tail wheel suspension, I got VGs, I've got landing lights and all that. So, I was anticipating keeping it, honestly, because we weren't even sure if we were going to be going back. So I was like, well, I'll just do everything and make it my own how I want to. But then we made the decision to go back. So, anyway, and thank you guys. I, I, I mentioned in one of my last videos that we needed more sponsors to be able to head back. We've had, I think I needed like 20 new sponsors or something, we're about halfway there. So if you want more information, there's a video at the end that talks about what we do actually overseas with our organization. Like I said, we still do need some more sponsors. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, you can check out the video afterwards, kind of explaining what exactly it is that we do over there in Papua New Guinea. No, I think it's those, I remember going over those ridges over there last time and it was like right on the other side of it. Oh, that's weird. I just looked at my autopilot and it doesn't feel like it's doing the altitude hold like it usually does. Like you can feel a little bit of pressure where I'm not feeling pressure and I can pull up and down on it pretty easily. I'll need to figure out what is going on with that. So let's just flip that off for now. That's one thing also that I've kind of found with airplanes is like there's always something you could be doing on them. Whether it's an oil change, whether it's just inspecting things, whether it's just a little leak here, a little leak there, whatever it might be. It always seems like there's always something that you could be kind of fixing on your airplane. Well, I wanted to get out for sure today or tomorrow because come Tuesday, we're supposed to have like 40 mile an hour plus winds through here for the next well, few days. But I wanted to get out flying with you guys because it's been so long, well, for one, since I've flown. But just being able to share my flights with you guys, I really do enjoy that. Oh, really big news. I'm going to be at Sun and Fun this year, the 28th of March through April 2nd, like a Tuesday through Sunday. So if you want to connect with me there, come to the E3 booth. I'm going to be there, I think, on like Wednesday. They'll, they'll have a thing. I think it's on Wednesday and then one other time I'm going to be there as well. But I'll also be just kind of around there. I know that they're going to have some kind of exclusive parties and things like that with them. And if you'd like to meet me, definitely come to their booth. They're one of the main sponsors for the sun and fun of this year down in Florida. So, yeah, really cool. and really excited about being able to meet some of you guys as well. And if you're wondering, am I bringing my airplane? No. I did very seriously think about it, but I think it's like 1,700 miles or something like that. And um, just during spring weather and stuff like that, I didn't want to get like stuck on my way out there and then kind of mess up the whole plans of being there due to weather or something, and then maybe being stuck longer down there. It was just gonna be, the logistics was just too much of kind of a pain that far out planning wise. So I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and fly down there commercially. That way I don't miss any of the event. It is a bummer. If you guys would like to see my plane, you can always swing by the Kingman Airport. I'm usually out there doing something, tinkering on something out here. The pass over here, open is just on the other side. I guess it's an old mining town and they used to use like donkeys and stuff. 
And after the mine was like shut down or something, they let all the donkeys go, I guess. And but then they've like kind of taken over this whole area. Got a friend that lives in this valley over here, and within like a four or five square miles at one time, I think it was in the thousands of donkeys. Ooh. <laughs> So no, that's pretty crazy. But I think they've been kind of carting a bunch of them out of here just because it became such a huge problem. So I think it's just right over there, but I'm heading over here just so I can start my descent um, just a little bit quicker. This looks like a really pretty drive though, that's for sure. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying some of the PNG videos that I've been putting out over the past few weeks when I was not flying this. If you haven't caught some of those, they're actually really good ones. They're not very getting very much push from YouTube, but when I was editing, I was like, oh man, these are like really good. I think people would really enjoy them. So if you haven't seen them, go check out some of the previous ones, maybe the past three or four videos right before this one. And I think you guys really enjoy them. They're into some really cool, like more technical places that we go to over there. All right, well, here's the old mine here. I don't know if even if it's still doing anything. It doesn't look like anybody's down there. And let's go ahead and start up our checklist. Let's get our fuel back on. Our brakes are good. Our harness is still nice. We don't have carb heat radios. I don't have that either today. But we're going to fly the strip backwards first. Do a quick look at it to make sure the shrubbery and things like that haven't come up even more. And also get a good idea of maybe where I want to touch down. Because last time there were some small like little bushes like halfway down the runway. And I just want to make sure that I'm landing past those. So our VREF today is going to be 53 miles an hour if the winds are calm. And we'll get our flaps in here in a minute. We'll go around this hill here so I can get a nice easy run at it. So the wind was coming out of kind of more or less the south, southeast or southwest today at Kingman. So I'm kind of expecting the winds are kind of coming the same for me here. Can't really tell right this minute, but it's so close to the hill up here. I think that we're not going to have any wind down there. Actually, yeah, look at some dust over there. It does look like it's kind of blowing this way. So let's go 10 degrees of flaps. Oh, one notch of flaps. I have no any, no idea how many degrees that is. Although the winds are here, are pretty rocking around though. Well, if the winds are too strong here, what we'll do is we'll head around the corner. There's a little bit more of an open. One, but then it probably will be a tailwind landing on on that one though. All right, there's idle. We'll just come down this valley here. We'll keep two notches of flaps in and around 65 knots, or correction, miles an hour. All right, where is it? There it is, okay. Like I said, if you want to try this on Microsoft Flight Sim or something, go to my Patreon page and you okay, guys can fly around all these awesome hills out here as well. All right, there are no cables out here. A little bit of a telephone line down there, but that's a really small, short one. There's a big bush at the very end that we'll be mindful of. I'll have to hit my wing on. Actually looks like pretty decent condition. A little bit better than last time, actually. Go full flaps now. Checklist is complete. Winds seem pretty calm out here. Not bad. First landing with the T3 tailwheel. It's smooth, I really like it. Oh, I also have this camera here I set up. 
The only thing is, is it's backwards. And as some... I touched my way. Oh, I was able to miss it. In some cameras, you can actually clip a wire and it flip-flops it. But this one doesn't have that. I tried. I clipped the two wires. There was a white one and a green one. And the green one got rid of the lines. But the white one just made it stop working. But sure is nice being able to taxi now with this tail wheel. It's actually really smooth. I'm, I'm impressed. I like it so far. I mean, one landing, so. All right, so yeah, that's just a little flip up thing. All right, let's jump out. And I'm gonna quickly walk the strip with you guys so you guys can see what I was looking at. I cannot express how nice it is out today. It's gotta be like almost 70 degrees out, which is amazing because it's been like 40s for a long time. So now we're on the ground. First thing I'm gonna look at, I actually brought tools also to tighten it up, is to check the tail wheel just because that's my very first landing with the tail wheel, the T3 tail wheel. So yeah, some of you guys might be like, why would you do that? Come to a place like this. Anyway, I did bring tools to tighten it up in case it got loose or something like that. Let's take a look at it. All right, everything is looking really good. Well, stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna do a couple takeoff and landings out of here just because, well, it's a beautiful day and man, it's really fun. So let's go take a look at the mine up here behind me and see what they have up there. I don't know if you guys can see this, but man, all the spring flowers are starting to bloom out there. It is awesome. So let's go walk down the airstrip real quick. This is the bush and that's the bush that I really wanted to trim down like another two or three feet lower because, well, there's my plane up there and I'm losing effectively like 150, I could almost be airborne by this point, almost. But I'm losing like 150 feet of usable runway. So I bet I could probably still get, oh, I know I can still get airborne, but I can get airborne easily before that little joggle in the row down there as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and walk right over there. I wanna know what that is. So if you guys wanna check this out, come on, let's go check it out. Now this is kind of cool, an old foundation. I really wish I would have brought my drone out here for you guys, but I actually wasn't even planning on coming out here until I got out to the plane and then I was like, oh, you know what? I should go out there. So that's why I came out here. I was just gonna jump up to Red Lake, do a couple touch and goes and come back, but then it was such a nice day and I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna be able to go flying later this week because it's gonna be so windy, so let's utilize the time I can. Well, I have no idea about anything mining. Huh, that's pretty cool. Being mindful not to drop my phone. Well, this is the Oatman mine, as far as I know. So if you want to go do some research on what this is, when it was built, what they mined here, I have absolutely no idea. All right, let's head back to the plane. I might actually have to just get a different camera up there. The screen's the same, but this camera itself, one that I can actually flip-flop because, you know, well, this doesn't really do the job that I was intending it to do. So our strobe's on, our wigwag's still on, our fuel is already on, our brakes are good, our trim. Finally got the indicator to work again. I'd fixed it back there, and then it's like a band that goes around it as it moves and it was a little bit loose and it, so it was just sliding on it so it wasn't indicating. It was still working just fine, it just wasn't indicating properly. Real quick run up. All right, that's all good. Everything else is good. Already texted my wife. Let her know what I'm doing. She's my flight following. Let's go ahead and taxi on up where we actually want to. I kind of wish I would have been able to bring my loppers out so I could have chopped this bush down a little bit shorter. Oh, just missed it. 
Winds are actually coming this way, so I'll have a little bit of a tailwind for landing, but it's only like maybe three or four knots at maximum. Flaps trim pump coming across. Everything's set up how I want it. Let's get going. Yep, off before the turn, like kind of like I thought. Go ahead get two things out, hit the brakes. And let's do a 180 and try it again. Go full flaps. Brake check. Make this turn to 65 knots. Miles an hour, I should say. All these cars are really wondering what this airplane is doing. <laughs> All right, we've got to mind that we do have like a four knot tailwind. We'll land kind of about where we did before, just before the little bend in the road. Fifty-three miles an hour. Door committed. All right, so let's just jump over around the corner. There's one more place that we can go to. That's like five minutes away. As long as all my batteries last. Here we go. Get all my flaps out. And let's start climbing up. Because we got some cars up here, and I'm going to save my distance from them. Go ahead and bring our power back to 52 to 5300 RPM. And these trails will be so much fun on like a Can Am or Polaris. So much fun. All right, this strip is just right over here. There's some campers that camp along it sometimes, so I'm going to see if anybody's camping on the actual airstrip. If so, then I won't land, but I'm kind of hoping that they aren't actually parked right on it. So I'll fly overhead and then just do a right-hand pattern for it. All right, looks like it's open. There's a guy at the end of the runway, maybe. All right, fuel selectors. Harnesses are still good. That's good. We have no radios. If we have to go around, it'll just be power up, left hand turn, and get the flaps out. It looks like there's somebody at the very end of the runway, so I'll just land in a little bit ways. And then everybody else is cleared off the runway, so there we go. Actually, I'm going to just make my left pattern from here. Let's go one notch. Notches. Looks good. We'll go off to the right of that last camper at the end of the runway, just so I'm not flying directly over top of him. Go full flaps and checklist is complete. Again, we'll go 53 miles an hour for final. Expecting a little bit of a tailwind. And we'll plan to land around that first road end. Maybe a little bit further, because I don't want to go over him too close. Man, having that Tundra light tailwheel Mixed with a little bit of suspension is awesome. Uh, 
guys. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and shut down here for two seconds. Go to these people <laughs> and and be done from here. Thank you guys for taking the time. I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of a hop around, checking out the T3 tailwheel, the Tundra Light tailwheel as well. Um, yeah, this has been fun. Anyway, like I said, sun and fun this year. Do not miss it. I will be there 100%. I will be there. The E3 booth. So make sure you make your way over there as well. All right, let's shut down. Get out of here.